So I looked in the mirror and I was like, what on earth can I do to be able to be able to provide for my daughter by myself? Because I don't want to ever depend on anyone. I don't ever, ever, ever want to be in this position again where I don't know how to provide for my family, even if it's just one person, <laughs> even if it's just myself and my daughter. I am Jordan English. I am from Pensacola, Florida. I am the co-owner of a real estate team through Keller Williams with my husband. And I am building a personal brand based on helping women grow their businesses and find financial freedom for themselves and for their family. Just side note, I am a mom of two, so I'm going to bring up an Incredibles 2 movie um, relatable topic. Oh, oh but um. that's like instilled in my brain. I have a three-year-old and I got the, I got the Disney playlist. I got the CDs in the car. I know what you're talking you about. You got it going. Okay. Yeah. So we have watched Incredibles 2 on Netflix probably 17 times since it was released on Netflix. And in the beginning of the movie, this mogul is like, the reason why everyone, you know, thinks you're bad people is because of perception. They only see what other people want you to see. And then they install these little cameras in their little um, superhero suits, and they change the perception of the public to these superheroes. And I just think that is so relatable to Instagram stories and social media for real estate agents, because we have that ability to say, hey, here's what we actually do all day. Here is all the work that goes into what we do. Here is how we are different and how we you know, put out into the world how we sell your house, how we build that relationship, why our clients mean so much to us. And I know a lot of real estate agents kind of do this as a side hustle. Um, but for us, and what sets us apart is all of our eggs are in one basket. This is like, my husband and I do this. This is our sole source of income. Like it is the biggest thing. So I knew a long time ago that we needed to share that behind the scenes on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, that way people can know what we actually do and who we really are. One of the things you said was putting on a different outfit changes the perception. Have you heard <laughs> of the ceramic cup story? No. Tell me. So it's it's very powerful. I'll tell it briefly for anybody listening. They definitely, definite, no, I can't <laughs> even say. You should go look for the ceramic cup. And uh, you're going to find a story of a speaker at a conference that was speaking and he goes and he grabs his coffee off the table and he drinks it. Then he pauses and he's holding a styrofoam cup in his hand. And he said, you guys want to know the power of perception and the power of the, the and the reason why people treat you the way that they do. Mm -hmm. He said, I was on this exact stage a year ago when I, when I was, asked to be here they flew me in a private jet when i got to the airport there was a black car waiting for me when i got to the events they walked me in they took me on a tour they gave me the best room available and when i was about to go on stage they asked if i needed anything i said i'd like a cup of coffee they went back and grabbed a ceramic cup and filled the coffee up mm -hmm. i went i did my presentation a year later they invited me back at that time, I was no longer their secretary of defense. I had to book my own commercial flight. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I took an Uber to the conference. When I got there, they asked me if I needed anything. I said, I'd like a cup of coffee. They said, there's some coffee over there, and there's some cups right next to it. He went. He grabbed his styrofoam cup. He filled it up. He went on stage, and he spoke. And he says, people are working with you because of the role that you're in. The, and, and for you to think that somebody is interested in buy or sell, buy or sell, buy or sell, they're not interested in that. They're interested in your position. They're interested in how you can help them. When I was no longer the secretary of defense, people didn't want me anymore. They wanted somebody else and somebody that fit that position. And I think that it's a super powerful story. Again, I probably completely messed up the story, <laughs> but... What it what it means is that you have to stop thinking that people owe you something. You have to stop thinking that you deserve something. And you have to just put out value. 
and 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 the more value that you put out, more people are going to attract to that. What are some pieces of value that you guys are putting out? So we have worked really hard to create categories for the content that we put out. Um, we have like our, we share things about our family. We share educational items. We share community building questions. We share what's what's going on in Pensacola. Um, we constantly provide value in the ways that we ask people what they want to know. And, you know, I, in the conference that we just went to, they were speaking a lot about, like, using jargon with your customers or with your clients. And so one of the things that we've been really hitting home on is really – We've been making professional videos explaining what these things mean. And like, for example, what is an EMD? What is a WDO? What are all these dang acronyms? <laughs> and But people really, if you've never bought or sold a home, you have no idea what we're talking about. So we have really implemented an educational pillar to our content because we know that to be able to work with people that we want to work with, they need to be educated. And so that's the biggest, one of the biggest pillars of our content right now. There's a great commercial that's airing, at least in my area right now. It's with a mortgage company and uh, it's a real estate agent. And it says, hi, welcome to 123 Main Street. Uh, The people walk in and he goes, hey, I just want to, or she says, excuse me, I just want to let you know, we do have two offers on the house. One's an FHA, one's a VA. (laughs) One's got 30% down, but it's conventional. The rate just dropped. But, you know, if he goes with this type of loan, maybe he'll do this. Oh, by the way, I also have the CRS and the ABC and the XYZ. So that's the reason why you should work with me. And uh, it ends a commercial was like, did you, you know, do you know know anything of what she said? No. And, And I think that a lot of agents are, the, the reason that they're talking that way is because everybody else is talking that way. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they need to realize that it's not about all of the accolades and uh, extra letters that you have uh, behind your name. Mm-hmm. At least in today's days, it definitely doesn't matter. What, what matters is, hey, y- y- there's, there's two offers on this house. Are you interested in this house? And the person w- then says yes. And you go, let me sit down and explain exactly what the offers mean and how they relate to you. And let's talk about your goals and let's talk about the things that we can do to help you. What would you say is a good piece of advice to somebody that's listening right now that says, you know, well, how do I go ahead and just start doing things differently if I've been saying, hey, yeah, I've got this credential and I do this and I that's the only thing that I've been talking about. I don't know to how to do what you're telling me to do. What would you say to them? Well, I think this completely relates to your presentation where you said to be authentic. And whenever people have, whenever they don't know what to do because they've just been fed what to do, like from their broker or from a team leader, to set yourself apart, be yourself. It's so hard to be other people. It's really easy to be yourself. So my advice would be is find out who you are. Find out what's important to you, what sets yourself apart, and just put it out there. Let people get to know you. Go out and meet every single person you can. Um, My brother actually just joined our real estate team, and he just moved to our area, and he knows no one, and he doesn't know what to do or anything, and I'm a very new team leader, so I'm like, okay, here's what I know. You and I are very much similar. We have charisma. We are good people. We're from the South. We have an accent. Go out and put your face to the name. Go out and meet people and say, hey, I'm Justin, and I'm new here, but I am willing to learn and go out and learn everything you can and take people on that journey with you. Say, hey, guys, I just wrote my first contract, and this is what I'm learning. Or, hey, guys, I'm doing an open house this Saturday. Um, But just take people on that journey with you. A lot of people think that they have to arrive before they start sharing. Um, I had a friend that was like, I don't know if I would be a good guest on your podcast because, you know, I'm I'm not there yet. I'm not where I want to be. And I was like, my podcast isn't about that. It's about sharing the story of where you were and how you got to where you are now and where you're going. Because always telling stories of people that have so-called arrived, that's boring. Like, I want to know what you're doing right now. And I think it's this whole piece of being authentic and, you know, really being vulnerable with your audience and saying, hey, this is where I'm at right now. Because people love that. And that builds rapport. And that makes you look like a real human. We had John Cheplak on the podcast. And one of the things that he was talking about was self-reflection. 
Mm. And uh, the reason that he actually brought it up was because I told him that I think that a lot of agents are trying to have a phenomenal business, which they are. And they're trying to hit these crazy numbers and they're trying to do things that they've never done before, which I hope that they hit. <laughs> but the, their, their issue is uh, they've put aside their family life and their personal life and they've put aside all of the things that actually make them happy. And I asked him, you know, for somebody that's trying to have this phenomenal business and has this terrible life, what would you say to them? And he says, you need to have self-reflection. You need to figure out what it is that you want, what it is that makes you happy, what it is that you want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to somebody that's, you know, 24 seven working, grinding out a billion hours a week, that's just nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. You know, how do you get that person to stop and self-reflect on their life? So I love this question because I did this in real time with my husband. So whenever we met, he had been eight years into real estate. He was a single agent. He was balls to the wall. And whenever we came into the picture, he saw, oh my gosh, I need to provide for this woman and her daughter. And that was motivation automatically. So he worked harder. He worked longer hours. But guess what? I never got to see him. I never, I, he would stay on his laptop till midnight. I would go to bed by myself. I, he would wake up and be writing contracts. And while that's all great and we're, you know, he's bringing in revenue for our family, revenue for our family or profit for our family doesn't matter more to me than seeing him and eating dinner with him or being able to go somewhere on the weekend or be able to go on a trip in the sky not fall the whole time we're gone. So what I told him is you really need to look at your life. You know, you're almost, at the time he was 32. I was like, we're about to have another baby. You know, we are about to have this life together and you need to figure out what's important in your life. Is it, and also there's seasons. There's seasons of growth and there's seasons of travel and there's all these things, but you have to figure out what's most important for you and for your family and really sit down with your partner or, or you know, self-reflect and say, what does my week need to look like? Because I, so I'm a big fan of tangible advice that you can actually do instead of like big dreams. And what we did together is we sit down with our calendar every Sunday and we say, what's happening this week? And in our family, we have core values. We have fun, fitness, um, family. So, and also our marriage is a, like a huge, huge important thing to us. So we sit down on Sunday at the beginning of the week and what we put down our boulders. Our boulders are non-negotiables. Like we will work out at this time every day. We will, if I can't work out this day, then you go pick up the kids. What days of the week am I going to cook dinner? What days are we going to go out for dinner? What day is date night? We have a date night every single week. Every week, same day, babysitter comes, we go out. It doesn't matter if we're still working or not, we go out. But you well, need If you're still working, how do you go out? Well, we we have we work at a co-work space. Okay. Got it. <laughs> so, but what I mean is like sometimes we can't turn it off. Got it. Yeah. So we're still out and we're eating dinner and things, but we're still brainstorming yep. and doing yep. things. So eventually we're like, okay, we got to stop. So how do you how do you how do you turn things off? We just say, okay, that's enough. Yeah, for me at, at <laughs> for me my phone goes to do not disturb. Mm -hmm. Um and it it stays there until 7 a.m. So at 9 p.m. it goes to do not disturb 7 a.m. Uh, it, it'll click back on. And that's, that's one way that I turn it off, uh, at nighttime. Mm, so then yeah. that way in the morning when I wake up and not, it's not really for nighttime. Uh, most people are not messaging me that late. Some are, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's for me when I wake up in the morning, the first thing that I want to do just instinctly is grab the phone. I don't. And I, the reason that I don't now is because it's on do not disturb. And I know now that if I wake up and if even if I grab my phone, it's not going to work. Right. I have to manually override apps every. And it's not just like one thing. It's like so you every have the single one where it thing. Like turns off your apps. Everything turns yeah, off. Yeah, I do that too. And I it's great. The phone calls, the text messages, the emails, every single thing goes off. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, you know, I think that what you're talking about of just, you just have to turn things off and you just have to stick to what you said you were going to do, especially when it comes to family is, is super important. 
What do you think would be another great piece of advice to somebody that just says, I don't even know how to turn things off because I don't have help. If I turn things off, I'm going to lose business. If I lose business, I can't go on a date night. You know, how do you get to the point where you can just say, screw it, I'm leaving? So, again, we went through this. And I knew at a certain point, I was like, I cannot survive another week without an assistant. And this applies to any area of your life. Don't be afraid to ask for help. You're not supposed to do everything by yourself. You need help with your kids. You need help with your like house or laundry or someone taking your child to violin lessons. You can ask for help in every area of your life. And that starts with your business because that is what brings in the profit for your family. You said you were passionate about helping women and being a woman on this podcast. I want to make sure that I give you the opportunity to speak to somebody that's listening um, that may hear things differently than if I were to say it. And what what's something that's just on your heart that, you know, if every single woman in the world were listening right now, you would tell them? Oh, gracious. <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. Um, so what I am super, super passionate about is every single woman having financial freedom. And that can come in many shapes and forms. The reason why I'm so passionate about this is because I was a single mom. I had a great childhood and everything was wonderful and perfect. And then I met someone and then my life hit the fan. And I ended up with a beautiful baby girl all by myself at 19 years old. So I had to grow up very quickly. And while I'm not super like money driven, it is a vehicle for safety and security. And I feel like a lot of women that are either single, maybe a single mom, or even married, they don't feel like they get to make decisions because they are not bringing in income. Maybe they're not bringing in income at all, or maybe they're not the breadwinner. And they probably quiet themselves to let the other person make the decisions, all based on money. So, um, and for example, um, a girl on our team, Carly, she is super passionate about teaching women how to invest in real estate. Because in our area, so many of the real estate investors that are big are all men. And she was like, where is the woman? <laughs> you know, where is the woman in this? But what I've found is that if you can empower a woman to know about money and know how to bring it in and how to, you know, manage it and pay things off or invest it, then they have power. And not to say, like, you know, I love, like, Bo and I, we make decisions together. We are 50-50. But I have a voice because I'm important. And I want every woman to feel that way. I want every woman to feel secure and free. And I feel that pursuing something that can bring in money for your family can do that for a woman. If a single mom is listening to this and they're a realtor and they said, you know what, that other person can do it so well because, you know, they have extra support and they've got this and they've got that, you know, what would be a, just a, it's not even a good piece of advice. What would just be, you know, actual life experience of being a single mom and, and knowing those struggles and knowing the difficulties and, and hard things that come up, you know, come with that, which obviously I don't know personally. Um, what, what would be something that you would say to a single mom in any industry that's just how do i how do i move forward how do i how do i get help how do i do the things that you're talking about if i don't have nobody to help me right i so i completely went through this um in the beginning i alienated myself from my family because i was ashamed of what i went through i was so young um i you know didn't go to college you know when all of my friends did, and they, I felt like they were ashamed, or my family was ashamed of me for where I was at. Um, so then I decided to go back to school because I was in a position, I, I worked in a department community. It was a great job for someone of my age, but I knew that I could not support my daughter by myself in that position, and I knew that there was no way for me to move up in that position. So I looked in the mirror, and I was like, what on earth can I do to be, able, to be able to provide for my daughter by myself because I don't want to ever depend on anyone. I don't ever, ever, ever want to be in this position again where I don't know how to provide for my family. 
even if it's just one person, <laughs> even if it's just myself and my daughter. Um, being a single mom is the probably the hardest and most rewarding thing you can ever do. You have everything on your shoulders. You have everything. Every laugh, every smile, every win, every single tear, every good night, every boo-boo, it's all yours. And I would just say use that as fuel. So I went back to school and got an accounting degree. And everyone was like, oh, you don't need that. That's so hard. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> but um, when I, I remember driving onto that campus. And it, um, where I went to school is just a big circle. And I was like, one day I will be able to say that I have an accounting degree. And I will know that I did it for my daughter. And whenever I graduated... There's, so I have a picture on my social media, but whenever I graduated, um, that was one of the proudest moments of my whole entire life because I knew that I could, when I did that, I knew that I could do anything in the entire world. If I could make it through three and a half years of grueling courses, driving back and forth an hour each way with my daughter in tow, taking her to daycare in the morning at 6 a.m. so I could be at class by 8 taking six courses in a semester so I could finish early. If I could get through all of that, there is nothing that I can't do. So I would say use that as fuel. Fuel yourself by the love that you have for your child. For anybody that's listening that wants to reach out to you, that wants to ask you more, that just wants to connect with you uh, and grow with you and, and, and talk more, where can somebody find you on social media? Awesome. So I, my favorite place to hang out is Instagram and my handle. You actually hang out there? I do. I hang out there all the time. (laughs) No, just kidding. Um, but it is at MRS Jordan English. So Jordan English was taken. So I had to do that, but, um, that is my social media handle. And on Facebook, I am Jordan Marshall English. And, um, you can go find my podcast on iTunes. It's called the life for me podcast. Sweet. We like to wrap things up always with one piece of real advice and um, what the, what I what I mean by that is if somebody were to click onto this episode and skip to the last 30 seconds they they know exactly who you are and the guest that's on but they've ne- they haven't heard anything we've talked about what's something that you would say that either stands out from this podcast that we've talked about or just something that you want to tell somebody that's listening I would say find out who you are Find out what sets you apart. Be yourself and be honest and authentic to your community and to your audience. That is what's going to fuel every piece of your business. Also, start with the end in mind. You know, figure out what goals you have for your family and work backwards. And finally, always drive yourself by helping people, not by the dollar amount. Because if you help people, the money will always come in. Sweet. Well, I appreciate you walking up to me and taking a (laughs) chance or risk, as you would uh, call it. Um, For everybody listening, Jordan is wanting to go on 100 podcasts by the end of this year, and I am lucky number one. So we have to start the movement and momentum for her. So make sure that if you're listening, share this, share this with another woman that is you know, hosting a podcast and so that way she can get on it. Again, your podcast is called The Life For Me Podcast. So make sure that you listen to it, subscribe to it, share it, get her to 100 podcast guest appearances by the end of this year. If you guys have any specific questions, again, reach out to her directly or you can comment below. Again, it was great having you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. And don't forget to leave a review. Say that again. Don't forget to leave a review. Yeah, leave 50 (laughs) reviews. Yes, get your husband's (laughs) phone and do it on his phone too. (laughs) Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, everybody. This is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment. Shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.